Dear researcher, writing and publishing a research paper can be difficult. If you feel clueless about where to start, it's the same for everyone. When I started my research journey, I didn't know where to begin. That's why I made this guide. The foundation of any good research lies in a well-defined research problem. You need to focus on something that adds value to your field of interest, something that is feasible and also something that is original. Here are some key questions to ask. What is the specific issue or gap that I am addressing? Why is this issue a significant problem? How will my research solve or contribute to this problem? Example, instead of choosing some broad topic like cybersecurity for Internet of Things, you can focus on a specific problem like improving intrusion detection systems for IoT environments using machine learning. Now this is also quite broad and you can narrow it down but it gives you a good starting point. The next step is to conduct a detailed literature review. A thorough literature review shows you how current your research landscape is and it helps you identify gaps your research can fill. It is crucial to avoid duplicating someone else's work. To get started with a literature review, you can use some databases like Google Scholar, IEEE or Springer Link. In Google, you can use filters like site colon edu and file type colon pdf to narrow search results and get high quality sources of research paper. Please note that you should focus on having high impact journals and reputable conferences as a part of your literature review. To get started, you can ask this question. What are the three critical papers related to your research problem? Have you found them? Now, when you do the literature review, you'll get a lot of information and sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed by the kind of research people are already doing. It feels like, you know, you're doing nothing. So now you need to narrow down your focus. To get started, you identify the time frame for your research project. For example, if you are a master's student, maybe your time frame is six months for a thesis. And if you are a PhD student, this time frame can be as large as three years or so. So you need to identify a specific research question that can be tackled within this particular time frame. You have to shortlist the topic that will be relevant for three times the duration of your research. Example, if your PhD has to be completed in three years, the topic that you are selecting should be relevant for at least nine years. A hypothesis is a testable statement that provides a potential answer to your research problem. It should be clear, concise and based on your literature review. For example, AI-based intrusion systems reduce false positive alerts by 30% in IoT networks compared to traditional methods. Now this is a hypothesis. It's an assumption based on the literature review that we have done. So how do you determine if a hypothesis is strong? A good hypothesis is testable. It may give you an answer of true or false. Also, a good hypothesis is based on the previous literature review. And finally, it is feasible for you to carry out an experiment to test the hypothesis. Depending on the kind of project you selected, you need to choose the right research methodology. The method that you choose will depend on the research problem as well as your field of study. There are some standard methodologies that are experimental research which involves testing a hypothesis through controlled experiments which is the most common for engineering students. Qualitative research is an in-depth analysis through interviews, case studies or observations. And quantitative research this involves statistical analysis through surveys, large data set or some simulation. If you have reached this far, you have already figured out your research topic and also your hypothesis. You have done a basic literature review and you are aware of what work everyone else has done. And that's why you have a clear idea of your problem statement. So now it is the time for you to write a research proposal. 
A research proposal serves as a roadmap for your research journey. It should outline your objectives, methodology, and research significance. Here are some elements of a research proposal. First, it should include a problem statement. Then, the literature review that you have done. After that, the research objectives and the hypothesis. And finally, the proposed methodology. How do you get started with a research proposal? It's very simple. You have to draft a one-page research proposal that includes all of the references that you have identified from the literature review and also a short justification for your chosen methodology. Think of it like a movie trailer of the research world. It should be short, exciting. People should get thrilled about what is going to come next. Once the research proposal is approved, now it is time to get in business and start writing the paper. You need to identify a logical flow and here is a structure that works for any conference or journal. At the beginning of the paper, there is an abstract. An abstract is a concise summary of the entire research paper. You must write the abstract last. After abstract comes introduction. Here you introduce your problem, its importance and also what you plan to solve. Then comes related work. Here you provide an overview of the previous research and also highlight the research gap. Then methodology. Here you detail your research design and your methodology, your process of how you conducted it. Then results. Here you present your findings which is often accompanied with tables, charts, figures, equations, etc. Then discussion. Here you are going to interpret your results and relate them to the existing literature as well as your hypothesis. Finally conclusion. Here you will summarize your findings and also suggest areas for future research. Now as I mentioned the abstract you should always write last after completing the entire research paper. Why? Because the abstract is the most critical section of your paper and it is always going to be the first or the only thing a researcher will see. A good abstract provides the core base of your research in about 100 to 200 words. Some of the questions you need to ask when you are writing your abstract. Is this concise and engaging? Does it summarize your existing research problem, methodology and results? Can it single-handedly give a complete overview of your paper? The fact is only 20% of the people will read your entire paper. The remaining 80% will just read your abstract and move along to the next paper. Another most key factor is citations of references. Now, references validate your claims. Example, whatever you say in your paper has to be either proven by you in your experiment or it has to be taken from someone else's paper and you have to cite the reference to it. Citations of references are done in some formats. One of them is IEEE format which is most common in computer science and engineering. The most important thing is that a proper citation backs every claim or piece of data that you are presenting in your paper and something that is not cited should not exist unless you have discovered it yourself. Once you have got everything in order, you have a draft of your paper and that's why you need to go over it multiple times. You will definitely catch a large number of errors through each of the paths of reading. Here are some helpful editing tips. Read your paper aloud to catch awkward sentences. You need to speak the entire paper content and you yourself will find out some things that do not stick together. Also try to break long paragraphs into smaller ones so that it is easy for everyone to read. And check consistency in formatting and style. Now you can use some tools for this and one of the best tools I used and I still use is Grammarly. Once you have written the paper, it is the time to select the right journal or conference. This selection will decide how visible your paper is. Identify whether your paper fits the journal scope. 
example a computer science paper may not fit well with a journal which is focused on physics review the journal's focus and audience even a computer science paper has specific audience but a journal's focus may be too large once you have shortlisted a journal, make sure that you are following all of the formatting and citation guidelines. They already have a template which is provided at the time of submission. You can download that and make sure that your research paper is following the same. What happens after you submit the paper to a journal? Peer review. In peer review, the experts will assess your paper's quality and relevance to that particular journal or a conference. They will provide you some kind of criticism and may ask you to provide a revised version of your paper. There are different types of peer reviews. The first type is single blind review. In this case, the reviewer knows your identity, but you don't know the reviewer's identity. The reviewer can probably make a judgment based on their knowledge about you, double blind review. In this kind of review, your identity is not revealed to the reviewer. Both sides don't know each other. They can give unbiased judgment about the paper based on the work that you have presented instead of who you are and what you are doing. If a reviewer provides a comment, address every comment, provide a clear explanation why you responded to the reviewer in that way and you can also mention why you are not ready to make a change that the reviewer has requested. Take all those feedbacks in positive intention and try to make as much changes in the work as possible. Also it is very rare for a paper to be accepted without any revisions. So now you have published your research paper. What are the next steps? You could actually build your research network. So if you are attending any conference and presenting the paper over there, try to network with other researchers or people who have taken interest in your research. Stay connected with them. This might open future job opportunities or collaborative research with them. Please take the next step in your research journey by joining my course. In my course, I will teach you strategies for finding research gap, the step-by-step -step breakdown of each section of your research paper, hands-on lab exercises, guidance on submitting your paper and handling peer reviews. 